we're going to talk about the uh, highways that uh, cars drive on and how much uh, money they're costing us. Uh, here to tell us about it is Randall O'Toole of the Cato Institute. Randall, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Now, uh, we have a, uh, a looming uh, fight in Congress now over to whether to reauthorize and how to reauthorize the uh, transportation uh, funding system. Uh, as uh, many people know, uh, while the uh, president has been talking about the need to build infrastructure over the last uh, year or more. Um, we already pay uh, over 18 cents a gallon on a gas tax that is uh, supposed to be funding uh, a lot of roads, bridges, uh, I suppose transit projects as well. Are we, uh, are we getting our money for that uh, 18 cents a gallon? Well, I don't think we are. Uh, up until 1982, all of that money went into highways, and it was distributed to the states based on formulas, considering things like the state's population and land area. And so each state pretty much knew how much it was going to get, uh, and they spent it pretty efficiently. Starting in 1982, Congress began diverting more and more of that money to transit uh, and to other non-highway projects. And it began be becoming more and more political. Instead of using formulas, they used a lot more earmarks and a lot more politically determined funds, either Congress determining it or giving the president the power to determine how the money would be spent. And that increasing politicization of the funds meant that it was being spent, they were being spent less and less effectively all the time. So now uh, we're at a turning point. The, uh, many in Congress want to keep the politics because it gives them power to be able to hand out money. But the Tea Party Republicans are saying, no, we want to stop this. We want to stop spending more than we're taking in. And we want to stop the politically uh, determined money and, and go back to formula funds. And so the debate right now is between the, the House, which is dominated by the Tea Party Republicans, and the Senate, that's dominated by the Democrats. And the, the Senate wants to spend more money and, and determine it politically. And the House wants to spend less and determine it uh, with formulas. That's right, and I, I believe uh, John Micah, the uh, chairman of the relevant committee in the House, has basically said, let's keep spending more, let's keep spending billions beyond what this gas tax raises even, um, but just not have as many earmarks. And I think for a lot of taxpayers, uh, if, if, the, if the tab is still huge every year, you're, you're not uh, necessarily comforted by the fact that uh, bureaucrats spend it as opposed to uh, having it being earmarked by Congress. Well, that's right. And, and, and the issue is that about the gas tax raises about $40 billion a year. We've been spending about $50 billion a year. The Democrats want to keep spending that amount. The Tea Party Republicans want to reduce spending to the amount that's being taken in. So uh, John Micah, the chair of the House Transportation Committee, came up with this compromise. We'll spend more, but we'll get rid of the earmarks. We'll get rid of the, the political funds. And uh, nobody likes it. The, the Democrats don't like it because they want the politics. The Republicans, Tea Party Republicans, don't like it because they don't want to spend more. Yeah. I, I, now, he could have come up with a different compromise. He could have said, let's continue with all the politics but reduce spending. And the Democrats might have liked that a little more because they still would have been able to control politically where the money went. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, less spending, obviously, uh, would be... Uh uh, a sound plan for taxpayers. Last thing, just very quickly, uh, uh, you and your colleagues at Cato have uh, made a point of uh, pointing out that uh, despite a lot of media coverage, uh, uh, bridges are, are not crumbling down around the U.S. In fact, they're, uh, I guess by government's own measures, they're healthier than, uh, uh, let's say, 10 or 20 years ago. Do, do I have that right? That's right. Not only have bridges becoming, been getting better and better, uh, the number of bridges that are considered deficient has been steadily declining. But our roads are actually getting better. You know, we complain about potholes, but the data show that the smoothness of the roads has been steadily increasing. Great. And, and I think it's because roads are paid for out of user fees and they get the, the people building the roads get feedback to do a good job. Sounds, uh, sounds like we don't need to spend so much. Uh, Randall, thanks for joining us. Thank you.